children of Galilee, why gaze and wonder at the heavens? This Jesus, whom you saw ascending into heaven, will return as you saw him go. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, we gather today on this great solemn feast of the ascension of our Lord Jesus. That moment in history when Jesus, having fully completed the will of his Father in heaven, ceased his earthly ministry to take his place at God's right hand. But he left that ministry unfinished in the world and gave to you and I the great commission to complete. As we gather them today, remembering this remarkable gift given to us by our Lord, we recognize our sins and the times that we are not open to the prompting of the Spirit. We take this opportunity to seek God's pardon and His strength.
let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ, your Son, is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's be attentive to God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostle whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs. Appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This he said is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward the heaven, Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you had been called. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. The Word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Jesus appeared to the eleven, and he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved. But the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God. Gladden us with 
holy joys. Without question, my favorite opening line to an opening prayer at a celebration of the Eucharist. Gladden us with holy joys. And today's feast of the ascension of our Lord Jesus is just that. It is one of the greatest holy joys. And it is a holy joy for a number of reasons. The first reason is this sense of the calling into mission. A number of weeks ago, I said that our Easter readings and everything that happened to the apostles and to the disciples was sort of this sense of an emotional roller coaster, an emotional, really, an overload. They see their Lord, the one they believe to be the Messiah, doing the deeds of God, arrested for doing the deeds of God, condemned for saying he is the Son of God, crucified, placed in the tomb, resurrected, walks among them, is present again, with them, sharing the message, eating with some of them, and then taken up into heaven. That's quite the roller coaster. He's alive, he's not. He's alive again, now he's going away again. And I love to get my mind into the mind of these disciples. You see, we experience that too in our own lives. What happens when the leader goes away? And they don't know whether he's going away for a little while like he did after his crucifixion. Is he going away forever? We have that same sense of anxiety. We have all belonged to organizations groups, and the president changes, or the chairperson changes. And everybody asks the same question. I don't know what we're going to do now that so-and-so is no longer the chairperson. I don't know what we're going to do now that so-and-so is no longer the president. We have those sorts of feelings. We are taken a little bit aback when the leader leaves us. And so it's understandable when Jesus is making it clear to the disciples that he is indeed going to go with his father to be at his right hand forever, that there may be a little bit of anxiety. In fact, I could even understand it if some of the disciples would have left, not so much out of fear, but out of a sense of frustration that without the fearless leader, we don't have a chance. And yet, our Lord stands among them and says, go into the world, proclaim the good news to the whole of creation. This touches us at another level. Because here is Jesus, who was doing the will of the Father, who was working the miracles in the name of God, who was proclaiming the message of God, who is now leaving, but he is saying to them, now I want you to do what I have been doing that he is entrusting to them the mission. You know, think back in your own life when, when you accepted some responsibility. You know that 
maybe your parents were going away and you were entrusted with something that you hadn't been entrusted before. Or maybe it was the first time that you, you drove a vehicle without one of your parents being in the vehicle. And the freedom that you felt and how good you felt, number one, because your parents trusted you, but number two, because you were accepting responsibility. I remember as a young priest, I was hearing confessions. And afterwards, when I was out and recess with the kids, one of the young girls came up to me and she was just, she, her exact words were, I am so stressed out. She would have been about grade seven or eight. And I asked her, well, why are you stressed out? Well, because my mom is letting me cook supper for the whole family tonight without any help. She was stressing out over the responsibility. This poor thing, she was worried about, well, is she going to burn something or is she going to do something that, that isn't right? And so I said to her, I said, well, what are you making? She said, tacos. <laughs> tacos, pretty simple, but it was still a big thing for her. And so I looked at her and I said, I don't think you need to be too worried about this. Or, you know, I don't think you should, should worry at all. I said, have you ever had anything that your mom made for you that she wrecked? And with the same sincerity, she looked up at me and she said, quite often. I said, well, if your mom still cooks for you and can make a mistake with it, and she entrusts you with the same responsibility, I know that even if you were to make a mistake with something, that your mom would still entrust you with the same responsibility. You see, when we are entrusted with that care, it's like for us as priests, the first time that you are named pastor, not associate, not assistant, not deacon, but pastor. And it's not about, for me, never has been, about power. It's been about the fact that my bishop trusts me enough to entrust the care of people to me. That has nothing to do with power. It has everything to do with humility. That I am humbled that the bishop trusts me. The same thing is when our parents leave us some form of responsibility. As I said, the keys to the vehicle, the keys to the house, going and doing some of their banking for them, filling out paperwork for them, doing their income tax, whatever it is. When we have authority or responsibility given to us, it fills us. That alone is a holy joy. And while there may be anxiety, it's no different than the anxiety that these early disciples felt when Jesus entrusted to them the mission of the church. And they're wondering, how are we going to do this if he is not with us? He says, these are the signs that are going to accompany you. You're going to speak in new tongues. You're going to cast out demons. You're going to pick up deadly things like snakes in your hands and nothing will happen to you. The assurance that he is not completely separated from the mission. His part, complete. Our part now needs to be taken care of. We could become disenfranchised. And yet, we are preparing in this week for the great celebration of Pentecost next Sunday. The sending forth of the Holy Spirit. The guarantee that he will be with us 
forever. Giving to us himself in the form of spirit. That the mission will continue. And we stand in that, in that holy joy today. To think that this message spoken to these disciples was said almost 2,000 years ago. The message has remained unchanged. He says to us, go into the whole world and proclaim the good news. And when we look back on the history of, of our church and the history of Christianity, we recognize that everything at our disposal has been used for the transmission of the Word of God. These last 14 months have, have forced us to be creative with the use of everything to bring forth the Word of God. But what we do know is that the greatest transmission of the Word of God is us being present to one another. It is simply being with one another. The mission, of course, which is so important, leads us, what I believe, into the greatest of the joys of the ascension of Jesus. And the greatest joy of the ascension of our Lord is this. That like Jesus, we are not meant to be here forever. The feast of the ascension is the reminder to us, as the opening prayer said, where Christ the head has gone, we follow in hope. It was never about earth. While the message is proclaimed to the whole of creation, we must remember that the whole of creation surrenders itself to the glory of the resurrection, to the new life. I was asked a question by a grade three child. Remember it very well. It was at Father Robinson's school. And the teacher was asked a question, but she didn't know how to answer it. So, of course, what she oftentimes did was, well, let's wait till the priest gets here and we'll put the priest on the spot. They love, teachers love to do that. And I won't mention her name, but if Adele Carolot is watching this, she will understand this story. I get into the classroom and one of the children, and they were talking about creation, the creation story. And the child asked me, on what day did God create the dinosaurs? <laughs> like, that's a pretty amazing question, isn't it? But, you know, I've reflected on that. Because I've made my peace on what day it would have been that God created the dinosaurs. But one of the greatest things that I look forward to is being able to be with our Lord in heaven when all of that is made manifest to us. When all of those mysteries are laid in front of us. When we recognize where God has been at work and that part of God's work, possibly the greatest, is that humanity would be drawn into new life with God. We can become overwhelmed by the workings of the day and by our labors. And labors, yes, our work gives us meaning. It gives us a sense of satisfaction. But we recognize, too, that our labors are surrendered to something that is greater. I cannot work my way into heaven. I can't. It is by faith that we are saved. And accepting that gift of faith that saves me, then I am compelled to mission as he instructed. In our first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles, 
they have this wonderful, you know, conveying of this message where the Lord says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses, not just in Jerusalem, but in all of Judea and Samaria, and indeed to the ends of the earth. We are his witnesses. And we are called to remind the world of the promises made to us by God our Father. We are, we are called always to recognize that like the Lord, we are going to be with God. It is a gift of faith. Jesus says, if you believe, you will be saved. If we believe, we are saved. And that is what this celebration of the ascension is all about. It's a holy joy because you and I know that as Jesus, who never lied to us, never misled us, never took us down the wrong path, as he ascends into heaven, we know with certainty that that is our destiny. We know that with surety. It is our destiny. You know, we hear that word used often. What is my destiny? We or we'll say, what is my legacy in life? What am I going to leave? And where am I going to go? This is what it is. The legacy I want to leave is that I was a believer. The destiny is to be with the one in whom I believe. And that happens when I carry out the mission. You know, I always love to use this line, and I wish I could claim it as my own, but it isn't. One of my professors at the University of Toronto said, when speaking about the mission of the baptized, said this, we are called to proclaim the good news, but the better news of this is that Jesus doesn't ask us for a curriculum vitae. In other words, a resume. Jesus sends us out. And in our second reading today, we are reminded that all of the gifts that are needed for this mission will be given to us. Every community that I have ever been in, God supplies the gifts of the ministry so that the mission can go on. Every community might look a little different. Every form of worship might be a little bit different. The music might be different. The preaching might be a little bit different. The way they do things, the logistics, they may be different. But in every one of them, God supplies. The Spirit is present. The gifts are there. All of them leading creation. To the gift of salvation. And that is what we're called to today. It's not just to, to experience these holy joys, but it is to live the holy joy. This feast of the ascension makes very, very real and very clear that the gift of eternal life rightfully be, belongs to you and I. The gift of salvation is ours. And with that promise, we rejoice in the holy joys that lay before us. May we continue to remain committed to this call of our Lord Jesus. Go into the whole world and proclaim the good news. That Jesus, the one who died for us, is now alive. He is with his Father in heaven. And that all of us together, entrusted with his goodness, 
the presence of his spirit and the reminder of his word are called to bring that joy and love into every human heart. Lord, today, gladden us with holy joys. Let us remember always the blessings that you give to us in our life as we prepare for the great blessing of being with you for all eternity. Together we take our act of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into service to continue the mission of our Lord Jesus Christ, we now place before our Heavenly Father our prayers as we minister to one another. For the Holy Father Pope Francis, for our Bishop Mark, and for all ministers of the Gospel, that rejoicing in the ascension of our Lord, they might always lead the faithful to the promise of the life to come. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For the flock of Christ on earth, that they might continue to be courageous in bearing witness to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the protection of healthcare professionals, first responders, and essential service workers as we continue to deal with the effects of the global pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For favorable weather as we continue with the spring seeding, for the protection and safety of all our farm families, and for a just sharing of all the blessings we receive from God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's continued grace as we work toward the upholding of the dignity and integrity of all creation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Louis Pochinski in all who have died, that the ascension of Christ might see all our beloved dead rise to the newness of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of all that is good, touch our hearts with a spirit of joy as we contemplate and celebrate this great gift of the ascension. Hear us as we pray, grant to us what we need, and bring all of us one day into the joys of that eternal kingdom where you live with your Son and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray now, my friends, and my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples, and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us shares in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with possible joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory. The mystery of Resurrection. 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Patrick and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Amen. also with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now go to the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God.